First strike to me, growled Tevish viciously. This piece of rubbish, this filthy sea worm, had taken his friend and caused him personal injury. When it showed its ugly maw, Tevish planned to strike once and once only. The beast's bulla, like a scaly boulder, rammed through the lip of the pit. Slowly, menacingly, the leviathan stepped one clawed foot, then the other out of the trap, and blinked its beady eyes at its armed adversaries. It was angry, it was hungry, and it was free. Tevish stepped forward, bronze icon at his neck swinging. He faced an armored shoulder to the beast and brought his broadsword above his head, blooded blade pointed at the leviathan. The monster opened its cragged jaws in warning. When the Nephilim held his ground, it snapped forward in a feint. Still Tevish waited. The maw opened again. An unseen wave of stench and swampy decay washed over the giant warrior. The beast shot forward again. No feint this time. It aimed to kill, to rip and tear and stab with a hundred foul daggers and fill its belly with its foe. With uncanny timing born of both instinct and skill, Tevis swept his sword in an upward stroke, aiming to pierce through the pale palate of the Leviathan into its brain. Jaws clamped down, and blade struck home. Time seemed to pause. A wisp of mist turned the combatants into gray statues, solemn and unmoving, locked in some unending mythic struggle. Noah held his breath hypnotized by the eerie impasse and the import of its outcome, and wondered if this, finally, was the end. The mists passed, and a deep rumbling growl from the Leviathan broke the spell woven by them. Tevish's eyes were wide, whites conspicuous even under his Tuscan helm, and his grimace spoke of the shock of a thing formerly unthinkable coming to pass. 